another month, another update leading us into February with Kasumi. For me and probably a lot of people, Kasumi is one of our fan favorites. And so honestly, from that perspective, it's nice to see her finally enter the game. However, for those of us who are not going to be blessed by Kasumi's presence, it is going to be hell <laughs> in PvP. And it already was hell with Tsumuki. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the new content update. This one is going to be for the majority of February. So after Muimi, we're going to get Kasumi, we're going to start looking at Anne and all of that. On top of that, I'll also do a brief character evaluation of Kasumi because Kasumi, whilst people, some people like we have to roll and some other people are like, nah, we've got to skip. Her presence is just like really freaking polarizing, right? And so I wanted to go through like all of her attributes and let you guys decide whether you want to roll for her or not. And so with that said, welcome to Kasumi. This is what Kasumi looks like. We are going to be getting her on February 14th. And with that, let's have a quick look at her skill set. All right, so for her Union Burst, she has Criminal Prison, where she deploys a field around the third farthest enemy, which means the third character in the middle. Generally speaking, this positioning will allow her to capture most of the enemy units because it does have a radius of 300 and not all units are going to like sit within that. Some PvP comps that don't actually a line there like that come to mind turbo suzuna or something featuring like a tank yukari and then a backline uh turbo halloween misaki also comes to mind things like that may help you escape kasumi's ub but generally speaking this is going to be a big fat juicer and so for the units that get inflicted with criminal prison they're going to get a TP gain rate decrease, magic defense down, as well as an action speed debuff. So let's have a look at the numbers for that in particular. Magic defense reduction is 2.4 times the skill level. Just let that sink in a little bit. 2.4 times 100 is 240. And my dudes, we are going up to like level 124 now. So it's probably going to be about 300 magic defense. For reference, and this is for Akari, you can see that her magic defense down is at a multiple supplier of one. So yeah, that is quite cracked out and there are definitely utilities for Kasumi in both CB and in PvP. However, let's discuss that later. Okay, moving on to skill one, we have inflicts magic damage to all enemies within range. And then on top of that, she also inflicts bind to all enemies within range. So if you guys are not familiar with the bind mechanic, first of all, it is essentially, I believe, Tsumugi's UB that does bind. So if you guys have encountered that one, then this is the same thing. But otherwise, it is essentially a reskill stun. And so honestly, that's pretty litty, pretty big multipliers, like not crazy multipliers, considering that this is primarily a CC skill. The bind itself lasts for 2.5 seconds, which is pretty decent. However, let's move on to skill 2. Inflicts magic damage to the frontmost enemy and then also inflicts confuse to the target. Honestly, pretty good because I don't know if you guys have come across like confuse or charm, but these can get pretty annoying, right? So charm or confuse lasts for 7.5 seconds while Kasumi's anyway. And generally speaking, even if you get a tank confuse, Confused. It means that they can't actually use like their healing skills or whatever. It's in essence disabled them for a period of time, 7.5 seconds. Especially effective on your tanks like Miyako or Kuka. Miyako spends so much freaking time in invincibility. So like when you can actually confuse her and stop that for 7.5 seconds, generally speaking, your mages can burst her down. Otherwise, that's kind of it for Kasumi. She's probably getting magic. Oh, magic defense. Absolutely not what I expected. Large increase to magic defense. And I guess it kind of makes sense because she is more of like a support mage and so to be honest i can respect that like especially when she's bringing in this massive massive magic defense down i do want her to live to keep like throwing out these criminal prisons and throwing out these bindings and throwing out all of these confusers but other than that let's have a quick look at this loop pattern so a bind into a confuse and then auto order into bind auto confuse this i think like a lot of the time i would look at this and be like oh man it's so trash and it kind of is because she's spend so much time auto attacking right the issue with her skills are that they are honestly pretty insane there certainly aren't many characters in the game that can like provide so much crowd control so whilst the loop pattern like doesn't look great i do want to say that it is kind of respecting the power that she commands because if her skills and her cc which is like all of them cycled more than this i think it would be like really really overpowered so yes in this scenario i do think that the loop pattern is probably more appropriate for balancing purposes. All right, and so that is Kasumi in a nutshell. Let's talk about her utility in terms of PvP as well as CB. For PvP, you might see her on defense. However, typically speaking, people are going to five-star her 
if you are going to put her on defense. Unfortunately, I think 3 star and the 3 star stats is just not enough. But if we are talking from an offense or attack perspective, 3 star Kasumi is more than enough. Especially because the majority of her power lies within the UB giving the defense down as well as all of this just like this cuckage man, this binding, we got the confuse, this crowd control. She really is a CC machine designed to just cripple the enemy team. And that is going to work whether she is 3 or 5 stars. On the other hand, on the topic of this magic defense down, you can already tell, right? That is that is a massive, massive multiplier. And it's actually for this reason that Kasumi definitely does see CB play, but later on. I believe she definitely comes in some either X Chica loops or with New Year's Kiaru. If anyone out there knows, correct me if I am wrong. However, that is that is what is sort of like floating around in my head right now. So from that regard, you already know it. She stays at three stars. Any more than three stars is not looking too good with the best TP gaining equipment that she can have. So generally speaking, it might be 9-6, it might be 12-4, it might be 11-6. I'm not actually exactly sure. But when the time comes, you can check out Mars's spreadsheet. You can check out Niara's or Chocolate spreadsheet. And so yeah, generally speaking, we're probably not going to be able to see her in CB overly much. But if you do want to be safe about her star level, she is three stars for sure. All right. And so that is Kasumi. Last question, I guess, is should you roll for Kasumi? I would say that considering she is a permanent unit and on top of the fact that we we do get an event for her in which we get her shards. And then on top of all of that, at the, around the same time, we also get her node. You certainly can pass on Kasumi if you would so wish. However, there is like kind of a minor caveat, right? So as you can see here, we've got Kasumi and then Anne and Greya, and then the Oedo Kuka, and then the Ninon Oedo. And then like, it's just taking a long, long time from Kasumi or Muimi where we are now, all the way to summer. The reality is, is that there's gonna be a four to five month gap between Kasumi and all of the summer banners. And in between this gap, I believe the only limited character is I believe the ReZero girls. So from my perspective, you either save hard for all of the summer units or you could pick one of these ones to pick up. It could be Kasumi, it could be Anne, it could be for the prefez Oedo Kuka who is again still not limited. She is permanent. It could be Oninon, it could be Rem, it could be Emilia. It's up to you guys because I completely understand how hard it is to save. All right, and so with that out of the way, I would probably recommend recommend if you were going to pick one of the non-limited units it's going to be Kasumi or Anne but if you are freaking down bad on gems and you you definitely saving all the way to summer no question about it again Kasumi is going to be farmable at around like April May ish so you guys won't be missing out on much hopefully with all of that you guys can understand whether you're gonna pull for her or not I'm still deciding Ugh, she's really cute but like I don't know man because the second half of the year is actually absolutely brutal all right so that's Kasumi done let's move on a little bit and we're gonna see we are going to be getting some new events honestly this is probably one of the best events that we could possibly have at this moment because as you can see makoto is actually featured here so what does that mean da -da 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 -da. makoto shards oh yeah oh baby oh yeah so guys do not be buying out the Makoto Shards if you guys already have like the five stars with an excess of Makoto Shards. Because with these Shards, combined with the hard mode nodes that we'll get, probably three of them, we're actually pretty much guaranteed a full UE, a fully maxed out UE for Makoto from just this event. And so my dudes, get freaking high for this because that is going to free up a lot of your clan battle coins. Otherwise, if you guys are still on like the four star Makoto or even three star or whatever, this is just going to be a very nice enhancement. But in terms of Makoto's and everybody's priority in terms of star levels versus UE. Generally speaking, you want three stars and then UE and then four stars, then five stars. All right. And so that is pretty sick. Moving on, Dark Blight Crag. Extreme 2 Dungeon. This is... <laughs> This is actually pretty good because we are going to be getting a new furniture piece. And so with this bad boy, you can already see those lovely, lovely heart shards that we are so desperately starved of. But not only that, like this bad boy is actually kind of hard. Like I hope you guys have pulled your Mimis or are planning to on the last day. This guy, it's actually, it's actually really tough. Like if you guys can remember when Extreme 1 came out, it was a freaking nightmare. It was indeed a nightmare. And this is most certainly going to be like that again. However, of course, your boy is going to be coming at you with the guides. Whether I tax them or not, that's another story. But just know that this is coming and it is coming soon. All right. And so next, we have the new unique equipments coming out for all of these different characters. Hatsune, Kari, Makoto, Rin, Mahiru, and Lima. If you guys haven't seen it, I've actually done a unique equipment video for all of these characters and evaluation. And so I will drop that in the cards above somewhere. I think there is a button that comes up on the top right hand corner 
corner. Check that out. But generally speaking, the priority is like Makoto, Kauri, top priority for CB. Otherwise, if you're focused on PvP, it's going to be Hatsune and Lima for sure. And if anybody out there is using Mahru UE, let me know because that would be freaking sick. All right. And so the next thing we have, oh, the Princess Arena reset and bracket shuffle. It's time, my guys. It is time to go and get your freaking first time gems. So with all of these resets, the Princess Arena, Battle Arena resets, whatever, I always highly, highly recommend refreshing your attacks to be able to hit rank one on the first day that it's available. Because I'm sure you guys know by now, but climbing over bots is way, way easier than climbing over actual people. So mark that in your calendars to 14, 14 February. That's about five days away when everything else is dropping. Get your three parties ready and just climb. I really, really would recommend refreshing attacks for it on the first day. Think about it this way. It's probably going to take about like 25, 30 attacks for you to hit rank one. 25 or 30 attacks is about like five or six refreshes, which only comes out to 250 or 300 gems. At max, that's like two pulls. And if you are able to do it fast enough and get rank one, that's 10k jemmies and you can like freaking chill for the rest of the season. Again, highly recommend. That's 100% what I'm going to be doing. With that, let's move on. Oh, this is nice. This furniture is is actually really freaking clean. But to be honest, I think like all pre-con furniture is pretty clean. The anniversary, the first anniversary furniture was super, super lit. But to be honest, there's something about this one that I really, really like. If you guys like it, go pick it up. I definitely will be picking up a set. Oh my God. Oh, we are, we are here. We're here guys, we are back to the Ram. It actually feels like it's been such a long time since I've seen his ugly ass face. However, I'm not going to cover clan battle here. I probably will be going back to the clan battle preparation videos because I do think that there is a need for them, especially for the people who just don't really understand what's going on. Moving down, moving down, we've got normal quest drops times two for six days. That's pretty, that's pretty good. And another good thing about this is that it's going to be starting from the 16th of February, whereas clan battle is starting from the 8th. 18, meaning we can squeeze about two to three days of farming before going into clan battle. So pretty good. Otherwise, we've got our standard rotation. We've got the hard quest going into times two and then the dungeon mana. All right, that's it. We've got also a summary, but that's pretty much the end. Honestly, pretty exciting update. I don't know what it is about like this update, but something about it just makes me feel like it feels fresh, you know? I think it's because it's not really like a seasonal event. So like we had Valentine's or we had Christmas or we had like a uh, Halloween or whatever. This one just looks like a, I don't, yeah, something about this update I just really like. But with that, you guys already know what it is. <laughs> Time to let me know whether you will be pulling for Kasumi or not. Again, I'm still on the fence. Whilst I really, really like Kasumi, I don't know if I should save or all the way to summer. So let me know if you guys are going to be saving for Kasumi and down in the comments below. And if you would leave a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video, then please give it a like. And if you would like to see more, then please subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Kasumi once said, oh, you're finally here. All good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.